Okay, this one is hypothesis testing for proportion. So 7-4 in our groovy statistics book. So here we go. So let's see, see if I got all my spelling corrections taken care of. So the z-test for proportion p is, is, is a statistical test for proportion p. Now, um, uh, we do a t-test for means, um, but if it's ever p, it's always a z-test. And we do... Uh, t-test for means if we don't know the population standard deviation and if we do then we do the z-test but for proportions you guys where it's um it's success fail yes no on off um agree or disagree so um uh, these are binomial things and so um so we always do z-tests on proportions okay and and uh, the sample size times p is greater than or equal to five and so is the sample size times q okay so we got to check that so it's all the same, you guys. So uh, z is um, uh, p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq over n. Does this look familiar? It should. Okay. p hat is our um, the one that we're focusing on right there. So guidelines for using a z test uh, for proportion p. Okay. So first, always verify that uh, np and nq are greater than or equal to 5. And then state your null and alternative hypotheses, okay, and specify the level of significance. So it's usually 10% or 5% or 1%. And if it's a two-tail test and it's 10%, then you're looking for the 5% on either end, okay? So 5% on the left and then over way on the right is actually 95% for the z-score. So you look in the body. So hopefully you wrote down the specific numbers uh, either inside your calculator cover or um, inside the, the textbook somewhere. Hopefully you wrote that. And determine your critical values, okay? And then we're going to use table four to get the critical values. Um, uh, and then uh, determine the rejection region. So for the standardized test statistic, there it is. Always sketch your curve and where your um, where your standard deviations are with respect to the z-scores and the rejection regions, okay? And then make a decision. So make an interpretation of the decision to reject or fail. And then always interpret your results in the context of the original problem. So here we go. A research center claims that less than 50%, there's P, of U.S. adults have access to the internet over a wireless network or with a laptop computer. In a random sample of 100, that is N, 39%, there's our P hat, says that they have access uh, access to the internet over a wireless network with a laptop computer. So at the at the 1% level, is there enough um, evidence to support the researcher's claim? So. So make sure that the, the products NP and NQ are greater than or equal to 5, and so they are, so we can go ahead and do our Z-test. Whoops, I went a little bit too fast there. So the claim is less than 50% have access over the wireless um, uh, network with laptops, okay? So our, our null hypothesis is going to be always the one that involves the equal part, so it's greater than or equal to, okay? And so our claim would be less than that, so we're going to go ahead and... Uh, because the t it's a left tail um, uh, test because it's less than and your level of significance at the 1% level so you can look up in the body of your of your table 4 or your z-score table or maybe you wrote it down but in the body your critical value is going to be z so look up uh, the 1% and so I think it's 0 .0099 something like that you get a z at negative 2.33 so anything to the left of that is going to be in our rejection region so if we get a z-score that's less than that okay so here we go all right, so um, I think it was nine or thirty-nine percent and fifty percent. I think you guys, let's go check real quick. So yeah, thirty-nine percent and fifty percent, and n is a hundred right there. So this is going to be uh, thirty-nine minus fifty, thirty-nine percent, point three nine minus point five zero. Okay, there's p, there's q, there's uh, n. So make sure you can get that in your calculator right there. You get a negative two point two, and we did today. So here's our bell-shaped curve. Okay, typically I draw three standard deviations to the left. Left. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Uh, I notice the textbook likes to go out to four. That's okay, whatever. Okay, and so our z-score for our rejection region is past uh, negative 2.33. And this uh, negative 2.2 is to the right. So the graph shows the location of your rejection region and our standardized test statistic. 
So because z is not in the rejection region, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's go ahead and interpret that. There's not enough evidence at the 1% level of significance to support the claim that less than 50% of U.S. adults have access to, the, access to the Internet over a wireless network with a laptop. Okay, all right, let's, okay, remember, uh, if you don't know your sample proportion, you can still find it by doing um, X over N, where X is the number of successes divided by um, your sample size, okay? And then also remember that uh, uh, when we fail to reject the null hypotheses, you might get a type 2 error, okay? So, for example, in the last example, the null hypotheses, um, uh, that uh, P is greater than or equal to 5, it might be false, okay? So anyway, so here we go. A researcher, um, a research center claims that 25% of its college graduates, there's P, uh, think that a college degree is not worth the cost. You decide to test this claim and ask a random sample of 200 college graduates. So there's uh, N. Uh, whether they think, and, and notice it said random, that's important right there, it has to say random, okay? Whether they think a college degree is not worth the cost of those surveyed, 21%, there's P hat, replied yes. So at the 10% level, is there enough evidence to reject this claim? Okay, so the claim, you guys, is, um, uh, well, we've got to check, make sure it's greater than 5 and both our NP and NQ are both greater than or equal to five, okay? So, so the claim is 25% of college graduates think that a college degree is not worth the cost. So, so they think it is, the 25% thinks it is. So that's our claim, so that's our, our null. So um, this is a two-tailed one because our, our alternative is not equal to that 25%, okay? So because it's a two-tailed test, Remember, 10% means 5% on both ends. So look up 5% and find your negative z-score, and that'll give us our positive z-score. So it's it's a negative 1.645, and so the positive would be a positive 1.645. So anything that's past those would be rejected, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do our z-score setup, okay? So I already forgot what p and p hat were. Uh, there's P, okay, and there's P hat, and there's N, so 200. So let's plug that in, crank it out, and we get negative 1.31, okay? So here's our curve. So here's a 0, negative 1, negative 2, and then negative 1.645 would be a little bit past, uh, halfway between. So um, our rejection region would be anything in here, any Z-score, or any Z-score over here. But look, it's not. It didn't go there. So the graph shows the location. Uh, and the standardized test score because Z is not in that rejection region, again, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there's not enough evidence, uh, even at the 10% level of significance, to reject the claim that 25% of college grads think that a college degree is not worth it. Okay, go to school. All right, you guys, there's your assignment. Take care.